One of the biggest problems with the modern world is the destruction of the human attention span. And that's what we have been seeing for years now in the United States. The destruction, the devastation, the stunting of the human attention span. Everyone is into short form content. Everyone. It's just shorts, short little clips, very, very small little moments to watch. And that's what people are into. Twitter, little blurbs of opinions. Nothing is really in-depth. Nothing is really well-researched in this world of short-form content. Back in the day, people read the newspaper. People would read the New York Times or Time Magazine or whichever one of the major publications. And back in the day, you really researched an article. You took the time. You asked people questions. You interviewed people. You researched stories. You researched current events. And then you would put your article out. Things were much more in-depth. Articles were written in a much more in-depth way. Nowadays, something happens and everyone wants to be the first one to report on it. Nothing is about the truth. It's not about the truth. It's about being first. And I'm not talking about just mainstream articles or mainstream uh, news outlets. I'm talking about everyone. Everyone on social media wants to be first. They want to be the first guy to report on an event. Something happens, boom, got to be the first. Because if you're not the first, then you're going to be a Johnny-come-lately. So people are just hearing rumors. They're hearing misinformation, and they report it. They report it. And I went on to Twitter today, and I looked up the name of the shooter, Mr. Crooks. And this was about three hours ago. And already I saw on Twitter... 640,000 posts on Twitter on this guy alone. 640,000. The, the number is obviously much larger now. But some hours ago, it was 640,000 posts. And I'm looking at these posts, and almost all of them are, frankly, brain rot. It's just... Uh, Democrats want to kill Trump. This is the Democrats. This is the Democrats. This is the Democrats. For all you know, this guy could have been any sort of terrorist. But they're already saying it's the Democrats. The Democrats wanted to kill Trump. The deep state. The deep state. Okay, this deep state that you speak of, really, what you're referring to is the CIA. Right? When you're talking about the deep state, you're talking about CIA, intelligence agencies... Alphabet organizations, that's what you're referring to. So if you want to talk about the deep state, we can talk about Operation Northwoods, we can talk about Gladio, we can talk about a whole bunch of other stuff, right? Uh, we can talk about uh, hostages for arms, the whole thing that happened between the CIA and the Iranians back in the 70s during the Tehran uh, hostage crisis, or back when Reagan was running. All of this involved the deep state. So the deep state is something that is really, really powerful, very wealthy, organized. They have unlimited amounts of funds. When you talk about the CIA, the CIA has unlimited funds. Unlimited funds. And it's very powerful, right? Obviously, very, very power po uh, powerful. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure on the Iran a hostage crisis. It started in 1979, but it ended in 1981. So I wasn't wrong. I said the 70s. But none, and but it went into the early 80s. But nonetheless, it's very powerful, right? It's funded with unlimited amounts of money. If the deep state wants someone dead, it would kill that person. 
It's very powerful, right? CIA, the whole thing. They want to kill somebody, that guy's dead. They wanted to kill Kennedy. Kennedy was killed. He was on a freaking car that was moving. He was a moving target. And shooting a moving target with pinpoint accuracy is very, very difficult. But they did it. If the deep state wants you dead, you're going to die. So how in the hell do you know that this assassination attempt was the deep state? You don't know. You don't know if it was the deep state trying to kill Trump. For all you know, it could have been the deep state making this whole stunt to rile up the right wing. And we all know that the deep state did this very thing during the Gladio operation, during the Cold War. They were arming right wing and Nazi uh, paramilitaries. They were backing them. They were having them do terrorist attacks so that the terrorist attacks could then be blamed on the left, the liberals, so that they could rile up the Europeans into right-wing nationalism. So for all you know, this could, have been a, uh, this could have been a gladio operation. And then you have people saying, well, this is the Democrat Party, and blah, 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 blah. And then it turns out that this guy was a registered Republican. So for all you know, this guy could have been a right-wing nut who wanted to kill Trump to further radicalize the right. That's another possibility. I don't know. But you go onto Twitter and you got these people writing as if they figured the whole thing out. And when they write, it's just little blurbs. One line, two lines. And they figured everything out. None of us have, have figured out this whole story. Obviously, there's way more to the story than how it's being presented, but we don't know all of the facts. For all we know, this could have been a gladio operation. For all we know, this could have been a false flag attack to rile up the right. For all we know, this could have been just a nut. For all we know, this could have been a right-wing lunatic who wanted to kill Trump to radicalize the right-wing ummah. We don't know. But the truth will unfold itself. And as more and more details come out, then we can deduce something. But you have all these people just ride and And here's the thing. Here's the problem. This way of thinking that people have, just everything is quick answers. Everything is short form content. Everything is just brief and shallow. This way of thinking is going to lead to our demise. Truly, truly. It, it, it even says this in the Bible. It says, my people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. In other words, people are stupid, and stupid people are destructive. What do you think a mob is? A mob is a mass of stupid people. That's what a mob is. It's a bunch of stupid people. All those people who were destroying property for George Floyd, they were stupid people. Stupid people can be very, very evil. In fact, I would argue that some of the most evilest people are very, very dumb. Now, you do have people who are predators who are more intelligent, but those are the ones that are leading the mobs of stupid people. And that's another thing that people don't understand. People think that if they do mob violence, that they're giving it to the man, that they're uh, revolting against the system, that they're rebelling against the elites, when in reality, they're all just being manipulated by another group of elites. If you look at the French Revolution, what was it? People say, well, it was a peasant rebellion. But then you actually look at the reality, the bloody reality, I should say, of the French Revolution. And one thing that you'll notice is that most of the people who were butchered in the French Revolution were peasants. So how was this a revolution for the peasant class when most of the people who were killed were peasants? And then you find out, well, actually, there were a whole bunch of members of the intellectual elite who were behind the revolution, yet all these... Um, uh, members of the intelligentsia who were of the Enlightenment ideology, who were pushing the rebels, uh, who were pushing the, the poor to rebel. And then you find out that they were actually bringing in free books and they were dropping all these free books in these villages in France to spread uh, revolutionary literature. They would actually come with wagons of books and they would just go to these villages and then they would park these books there, and then, and then you would have these men passing books around, passing revolutionary literature, and all of this was being backed by members of the intellectual elites 
Uh, the Illuminati was behind this. And when, when I say Illuminati, I'm talking about the actual organization that existed in the 18th century. I'm not talking about some organization that people say George Bush was a part of or whatever. I mean, this was the actual Illuminati. The Illuminati goes back to the 18th century. Uh, it was founded by a guy. His last name was Weishaupt, I believe. And the Illuminati was a group of elites who were intellectuals, and they were pushing for revolutionary ideology to overthrow all religious institutions and all monarchies. So these were elites who were manipulating uh, the the rabble. They were manipulating the mob. They were manipulating uh, the plebeians to do revolution. And so when people talk about doing revolution, all these people are being manipulated by people who are wealthier than them, who are richer than them. Uh, if you if you look at all of these far right media outlets and all these uh, different different types of of uh, media outlets, different types of uh, ideological platforms that push for uh, any sort of radicalism, you'll see that they're being funded by someone. Someone is funding them. Someone is backing them. Now, of course, this is not always the case, but it is the case enough times not to ignore it, not to ignore this reality. So. The thing is that when people are, when people cannot have a serious attention span, when people are not willing to actually take the time to read and to actually study in depthly, they are prey to massive manipulation, to mass manipulation. They are absolutely prey to it because they got, they're going to go where? They're not going to go read books. They're not going to go read the Atlantic. They're not going to go read uh, in, in depthly researched article or book they are going to go to twitter and when they go on to twitter they're going to get blurbs of radicalism just blurbs of radicalism and they're going to fall for it and because they have short attention spans they're going to think that this is the reality see when you just train your brain to look at short form content you're training your brain to focus on very very short moments or very, very short bursts of information. It's like lifting, right? If you're not lifting anything, you're training your body to not be able to lift heavy objects. When you lift heavy objects, you're training your body to lift heavy objects. It's the same thing with the brain. When you don't use your brain to focus on long form content, be it a book or a documentary or a lecture, you are training your brain to really atrophy. Your brain will actually go into a process of atrophy. And you will really have no will or you'll have uh, a very, uh, very small amount of will to actually focus on something that is in depth. And so because your brain is atrophied and you haven't trained your brain to really focus, and to look at things in depthly, you're going to look at short form content. You're going to look at little blurbs and that's going to be enough for you. And you're not going to really go beyond that. So your brain, like I said, atrophies and you're just looking at short form stuff. You're just looking at blurbs and because you're not, because you don't really have the will to look beyond that. What happens is that you read a blurb that says, illegal immigrants are destroying America and uh, they're going to uh, exterminate all white people or something like that. And you believe it. I mean, you believe, you know, you, obviously you have a bias towards that way of thinking, but you're not sitting there wondering to yourself, Hey, I should actually research something. No, no, no. You're believing these little blurbs, these little opinions, these very short opinions. And that's what happens. And then before you know it, you're th you start thinking that you're being invaded by Guatemalans, and then Guatemalans are the enemy. That's why I say the, the guy who tried to kill Trump, this crooks guy, I just say, thank God he was a white guy. Because if he was any member of a minority community, it would be, it would be crosshairs on minorities. If it was a Middle Eastern guy, oh my God. Oh my God, God help me. I wouldn't leave the house. Honest, honest to God, I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave the house. I wouldn't. Because people are that crazy. People are that crazy. They don't have attention, long attention spans. They're just sh short form content people. And so they see a, a line that says this minority group is doing this and they're going to destroy white people or whatever. And 
you, 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 these people don't even think. They become zombies. They become zombies. And so you have these people, these zombies, who are saying we should have a civil war because they read some lines on Twitter or whatever, and they're not even fully thinking. And my opinion is that you guys shouldn't have any right to make any sort of serious decision, let alone a decision to have a civil war. You guys are crazy. And and they they refuse to think beyond the present moment. Like I said, they don't want to think in an in-depth way. It's just, we should have revolution, civil war, blah, blah, blah. Well, why should we have a civil war? Well, because illegal immigrants are destroying the, the country or whatever. People have been saying this since forever, by the way. People, have, you can go back in American history. You can go back to the nineteenth, the nineteenth century. Uh, you can go back to the entirety of the twentieth century, and you will see this rhetoric just on like a broken record in American history that some kind of immigrant group is ruining it for the rest of Americans. They said this about the Irish. They said this about the Italians. Now they're saying this about other people. And so you have these people who say, well, we should have a civil war because of illegal immigrants, because Mexicans are destroying America or whatever, and all this garbage. And you tell them, well, you tell them the realities of civil war. You tell them if you do a civil war, you could kill literally millions of people. A civil war would lead to possibly the deaths of millions of people, probably the deaths of millions of people. It would lead to starvation, disease, Hospitals would be closed, so people would die of disease. Uh, it would ruin plumbing. So without plumbing, you don't have clean water. It would horrendously hinder the uh, supply chain, so people would be without food, without enough food at least. It would lead to just utter misery. It would be very nightmarish. And then they'll say, well, uh, they'll say something crazy like, well, the tree of liberty has to be watered with the blood of people or whatever. And I'm thinking, so let me get this straight. You bring in Mexicans. They're doing the construction work. And then you're saying that this is ruining America. So, yes, you do have people who come into America with bad will, blah, 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 blah. Yes, but at the same time, a lot of migrants come here and they work and they do a lot of the jobs that people don't want to do. And you're saying that that is worse than millions of Americans being killed in a civil war. I, I had a debate with a guy years ago who was an anarchist. You can find it on my YouTube channel. The guy was an anarchist, and he told me that he wanted a revolution in the United States. And he was a lefty. He wasn't a righty. He was a lefty. And I said to him, I said, are you a Democrat? And he said, yeah, I am. And I said, where would you have the revolution? He said, well, we would have it in Washington, D.C. And I said, do you, do you want to support minorities? And he said, of course I do. And I said, do you know that the majority of people living in D.C. are African-American? And you know that if you did a revolution in D.C., the people who would suffer the most would be African-Americans. And he said, you know, I didn't think about that. <laughs> At least he was uh, good faith enough to acknowledge that. But the situation that most of okay, all these Americans are what they're eating Burger King, KFC. I mean, I, I know how Americans live. I, I know I'm, I'm American myself. Right. But because I come from, uh, you know, I come from a not an immigrant background, but I was raised in an immigrant household. I have different perspectives, perspectives that are different from the average American. Not saying that makes me better. It's just the reality. And I know how Americans are. I know how they live. You know, a lot of them are just live off fast food. They go to, you know, they do drive throughs They're doing what, what are they doing? Uh, DoorDash, which to me is an abomination. DoorDash, DoorDash. I mean, I see my neighbors. They're just DoorDashing all the time. DoorDash, 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 DoorDash. They're spending all their money on DoorDash, Netflix. And they're talking about a civil war? You're saying that your life right now is so horrendous that you need to do something that could lead to the deaths of millions? I think that's crazy. I think it's crazy. You, you're, and, and I know people are going to say that I'm wrong and all this stuff, but one thing I've noticed is that the people on the internet who are pushing for civil war and all that stuff, if you look at them talk, a lot of them, you can tell, are very, very flippant. And they are the types of people who just spit out blurbs of opinions 
like migrants are are going to destroy all of America or whatever, or that the Democrats, you know, tried to kill Trump, and then you find out that the shooter is a, is a registered Republican. You look at all this stuff, and maybe the Democrats did try to kill Trump. I don't know. We don't know. We don't have all the facts. My, that's my whole point. But you look at these people, and they are the types of people who are easily manipulated by Twitter statements. Now, people who are manipulated by Twitter statements, in my opinion, should have no right to make any sort of serious political decisions. That's my opinion. Anyway, uh, the destruction of the American attention span to me is the greatest threat of all. There is no greater threat than that. Because we have such low attention spans, we are susceptible to being manipulated by some mob ruler. Anyway, you guys just heard some theology. God bless.